Almighty and ever living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we give you thanks for the rest of the past night and for the joys and glory of this new day. We especially give you thanks for granting us this opportunity to share in this act of worship and pray that your Holy Spirit may guide us, that by the prayers offered and the praises rendered, your name may be honored and glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. The hymn number six. Now that the daylight fills the sky, we lift our hearts to God on high. At the in all we do or say would keep us free from harm today. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this service of morning prayer for today, the Wednesday in the week of the first Sunday after the Epiphany. Today, we also observe in the church the Feast of St. Hilary, Bishop of Poitiers, in the year 367 AD. For those who wish to follow this Mass at home, our psalm is Psalm 119, verses 1 through to 24. And the first lesson is Isaiah chapter 41, verses 1 through to 16. And the second lesson will be the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through to 45. Our worship continues with the versicles and responses on page 35 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, 
in whom is our hope and our joy. The jubilate. O shout to the, the Lord, Lord in triumph, triumph all the earth. Serve, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For, For the Lord, Lord is good, good. His, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. Father. In your, your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins. known Lord, and unknown, things done and left undone. And, undone. and, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, name through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Psalm 119, verses 1 through to 24. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous just judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? by keeping to your words. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. 
for your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 40, 41st chapter, beginning at the first verse. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east? called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. The isles saw it and fared. The ends of the earth were afraid, draw near and came. They helped every one his neighbor, and every one said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smoldeth with the hammer, him that smote. The anvil saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, O Israel, are my servant, Jacob whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that are incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish. You shall seek them, and shall not find them, even them that contended with you. They that war against you shall be as nothing, and as a thing of nothing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you worm of Jacob, and you men of Israel. For I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. You shall fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and you shall rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Here ends the reading. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, you have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised the whole to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. A leper came to him, begging him, and, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, touch my lips. Open our hearts and transform our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. On Monday, I opened my favorite study Bible as I always do when preparing a sermon. I read the passages of scripture associated with our act of worship for today, beginning with the appointed psalm. And to my surprise and delight, the theme for Psalm 119 read, God's word is true and wonderful. Stay true to God and his word, no matter how bad the world becomes. Obedience to God's laws is the only way to achieve real happiness. As I read it, I thought to myself, this is a nugget of gold, a pearl of wisdom. This is the answer to the prayers of so many who are grappling with the trials and tribulations of the world today. This piece of treasure is so relevant to us today. Who could believe that this portion of scripture may have been written by Ezra the priest in 37 BC? To those who say the Bible is no longer relevant, I say, wake up. Throughout this psalm, the psalmist speaks of following God's law. 
not as a burdensome discipline, but as a celebrated honor. Verse 14 states, I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. Additionally, Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14, is a reminder that God's law is perfect, restoring the soul, sure, making wise the simple, right, rejoicing the heart, pure, enlightening the eyes, true and righteous altogether. Then comes the over-the-top part where the psalmist says that God's ordinances are more to be desired than gold, sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. My brothers and sisters in Christ, verse 1 of Psalm 119 emphatically states, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. The word blessed is found repeatedly in Jesus' Beatitudes. Matthew 5, verses 3 to 11. Some biblical scholars equate it to the word happy. Others say it implies happiness. Being blessed, as the word is used in this verse, suggests two things. The first is the joy of a life that is on track. A life moving in a soul-satisfying direction. A life that has not been derailed by bad choices. And secondly, being blessed is another gift from God. A gift that confers centeredness and self-assurance. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord. The word ways is used metaphorically to mean the pathway a person is following, the direction of his or her life. The pathway might be good or evil. The person might choose to walk in the light or in the dark. The pathway might lead to life or death. But the psalmist says that the outcomes are far from random. God will ensure the blessedness of the person who walks according to God's law, the person who is obedient and follows God's world, the Bible, the only sure guide for living a pure and happy life. As Christians, we still have commandments that we need to observe. When a scribe asked Jesus in Mark 12, 29, 31, what he considered to be the greatest commandment, Jesus answered, the most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. <clears throat> the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Most of us buckle under laws and rules because we think they restrict us from doing what we want. But the way of the godly is blessed. And we are called to walk in this way. At times, it may require separation from the world. And a reliance upon the word of God that leads to spiritual freshness and fruitfulness. The problem comes when in our sinful ways, we have no desire to walk this way. We just want to do our thing. Don't wear a mask or wear them incorrectly, have our large gatherings, break quarantine and curfews with reckless abandon, as though we are not in the midst of a pandemic. And if we ourselves don't break these laws, we encourage others to do it by not saying anything when we see them breaking the law. Yes, these are the laws of the land, but Romans 13, to 2 informs let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against God. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Further in verses 11 and 12, we are warned, and do this. Understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Let us put aside the deeds of darkness 
and put on the armor of light. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God's laws, direct and indirect, were given to free us to be all that he wants us to be and serve to restrict us from our self-destructive ways. To maintain a holy and happy life, we must therefore take heed or conform our lives according to his word. This is exactly what Paul exhorts to us when he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may approve what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. It's very easy for us to be conformed to the world, for the world is all around us. Therefore, it is essential that we actively counteract the influence of the world by renewing our minds to live in accordance with the revealed will and purpose of God. But how do we do this? We hide the word of, God's in our, of God in our hearts. As Psalm 1, 19, 11 declares, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. To do this takes time time spent in the Bible. It will not happen from a brief reading of a few verses when we have time. So we can feel better that we've read the Bible. We must take the time and make the effort to hide, read, and internalize those few verses in our hearts. Think of the man who found treasure and hid it in the field, Matthew 13, 44. To do this required him to place a shovel into the soil again and again, digging a hole and filling it again. Do you think that after he spent time doing this, he would forget where his treasure was? Certainly not. This is the same with hiding God's words in our heart. Reading and repeating it are helpful, but our meditation upon his word is vital to our survival. By turning them over and over in our minds and studying them, these words will become hidden treasure to us, effective in keeping us from the temptation to sin, offering us hope and strengthening us for this battle we call life. I therefore pray that through all the changing scenes of life, we will truly be able to say with conviction the words of verse 24, your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. That is, my best advisors. I learn from them. Better than any other way, how I ought to act, so that it pleases you, O oh God, my Savior. Amen. Let us now reaffirm our faith in Almighty God as we say together the baptismal creed, the Apostles' Creed, on page 42 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, 
reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations. And teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness. And her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed. That your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us that in us and through us your will may be done. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O Lord our God, you raised up your servant Hilary to be a champion of the Catholic faith. Keep us steadfast in the true faith which we profess at our baptism, that we may rejoice in having you for our Father, and may abide in your Son, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer of Dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to him, who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn number 101. In the cruel well, Herod's fair, and all that Christ the King is near, he takes not earthly realms away, but gives the realms that ne'er decay. The Eastern sages saw from far and followed on his guiding star. By night their way to light they trod, and by their gifts confessed their God. Within the Jordan's sacred flood, the heavenly Lamb in meekness stood, that he who knew no sin that day, his people's sin might wash away. And oh, what miracle divine, when water reddened into wine, he spake the word and forth it in streams that nature ne'er bestow. O glory, Jesus, be to thee, for this thy glad epiphany, whom with the Father we adore, and holy ghost forevermore. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven and earth. And may Christ, the Son of God, gladden our hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you, and all those whom you love and pray for, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and continue to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>